What's going on? It's your boy Libregat90 back with another DBD video. This is the Survivor Side Story podcast. If you guys are new to this, basically what I do is an all audio version. I try to keep it between, let's say, 20 to 40 minutes long. I'm going to try to go for 20 or 25, maybe 30 at the most, depending on how fast I can get to my point. Uh, audio version only. I do have videos. You can check them out, but I love doing these audio podcasts. This is just if you're on the go, if you're busy, you can't really pay attention to the phone. If you're out and about, maybe working out, uh, just listen to the audio version of this. If you have YouTube premium, you probably be able to listen to this on a lock screen. If you have YouTube music like I do and I pay for that, I can, to I can just hit song. If I look at my channel on YouTube music, I can just hit song and not video. And I can just play this with the lock screen on. The goal is just to listen to this. That's all it is. Uh, there's a lot of people who do enjoy, but I need more people to enjoy and let me know if they actually like these series just so I can have the confidence to continue to do this. Because I just don't want to waste my time. I, I enjoy I enjoy that people who are personally members to me who actually sign up monthly just to hear these things. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to continue to try to do them. I just want more people to enjoy them. People enjoyed the last video that I put. Well, it's the mixed reviews. There's a lot of people who probably didn't like it because I said I didn't want to bring escape cakes or not escape cakes, you know, the anniversary cobbler and stuff like that, the eighth year anniversary. You know, um, I got a lot of flack for that, but I did get a lot of views. It did pretty well. It's still doing well, and a lot of people like those. They was liking the video. So I just want to be very clear. I do have those videos, but I like to do an audio version. And just let me know your honest reviews in the comments. Okay, let's get right into it. So I'm going to talk about why I do not like to play with uh, streamers in DBD, particularly survivors, not killers, because I don't know the killer is streaming until after the game. Survivors in this game is so entitled, and I'm a survivor man with over 7,000 plus hours, a little bit under four years, might I add. And I'm telling you this now, I get a lot of flag, oh, anything that survivor says or fight for or fight against that you know upset the killer on any level or killer disagree with you are, you are automatically entitled and i just think that's unfair to say it's just an unfair judgment i mean you have your person you know your personal beliefs you have your biased opinions but anybody who actually watched my content and not just see like the first five seconds or a minute of the video you will learn that i will i hold everybody accountable both sides um i would actually go as far as say survivors are the most entitled in this game um because a lot of the things that they lose their game on it is their fault they can actually stop trying to be overly altruistic stop trying to be able to kill at the exit gates just leave uh i just think that the killer sort of have their own way of being toxic you know dry humping on the ground uh bleeding uh somebody out just because they just want to prove a point uh can only go on after one person because they're a streamer or whatever that's just you know what i mean like you have people who do that in this community and it might not be you but there are people who do that so i just want to be very clear i just don't like that killers act like just because it's 4v1 that they have the only right to be um you know toxic or it's not toxic it's just them play playing the game but okay so in this video like today or this podcast episode oh shout out to my co-host nia you know <laughs> i had to shout her out with my cat you already know like my invisible cat my invisible girlfriend nia right, right? <laughs> no I'm, I'm i'm just messing around but not really um i played today uh with this streamer um not a big streamer you know just a guy just trying to grind right he was a claudette and he was with his friend and he was the dwight so his friend was dwight i was claudette but then i switched to uh my dwight and we start the match and i'm like okay and i kind of want to flex my PUBG skin because i know no one not many people got that skin because that was like a couple years ago you had to do like the challenge on PUBG. you have to like download PUBG, play it and all that stuff i did a video on it, it did pretty good but anyway we end up going uh to gideon so but you know you know like when the match about to begin you know they show like the offerings and who's bringing what um i uh, i was trying to go to auto haven i think and he ended up burning um gideon or the game and so we're going against the doctor and i'm in chase first okay so i'm in chase first i did pretty good i mean, I mean you know, mind you, you know, doctor can shock you before you like vault. It just, it's, it's all pin, depends on the timing, right? Oh, and there was also a Zarina. I just want to be clear. There, there was a Zarina. So it was a Zarina, me as the white, uh, the Claudette, which is the Twitch streamer, and then his friend, um, the Dwight himself. So I went down like what, maybe like a minute twenty. I don't know, right? I, I went down eventually, and then uh, he went after the Zarina, but that Zarina ended up going like DCing. I think before he even got chased. Well, she got chased, so then it ended up just being a bot. So, you know, the bot can juice a little bit, and then that doctor ended up catching the bot eventually. 
Now, his friend ended up getting chased, so we're already pretty much down with three people. It's pretty much a 3v1, although the bot is somewhat helpful. It's still not the same as somebody who is actually competent, although I will argue that you have a lot of bots that are more competent than a lot of actual human bots <laughs> that play this game. I'm just going to be honest. Because they're going to be all about the objective. They may not know how to mind game and loop. They may have a little wall hack that help them, but at least they're about the objective. That's the one thing I will say. So, to make a long story short, I sort of have... Um, the stream up in the background and i'm doing gens like if i'm not in chase i'm doing gens eventually though like after they unhook me from the basement and you know uh we go upstairs and we heal i hear i hear the streamer say oh man he pretty much used up all the god palettes i'm like well i'm going against the doctor that's shocking i don't want to play too the, the issue i have with people in this community is like y'all gotta realize when to play safe and when not like when to just like don't be so greedy in your chases like i can pretty much live anybody who watched me knows like my body right in this game like I, I don't have to prove that but it's just like you know it's a doctor it all depends on the killer you don't want to just like keep trying to be too greedy especially with doc if you don't use the pallet and then you got so greedy and then you end up going further in your chases but then there's no pallet to get to and he shocks you, you're just gonna go down like it literally makes no sense to be that greedy anyway i digress so i get i end up getting healed and he ended up chasing the dwight now this is the issue that i have the dwight was running from the killer he didn't do that well as me he went down like maybe in like 50 seconds but it was still a decent time chase i'm still doing gens but his guy i think got the save got a palace done got the flashlight save i don't know right so then like they end up running around some more mind you at this point the bot ended up eventually just like dying out and i'm just stuck doing gens all by myself this guy went down, but his friend saved him in the chase. So this entire time, the doctor's having a hard time catching, you know, these survivors because he's body blocking, he's palace stunning, whatever. It's like it's like at the level of the MMR that I'm at, it's like you have a lot of survivor killers who just don't know how to pay attention. Like look around <laughs> before you pick up. If you see a survivor die on the pallet, I mean, I don't play killer, but I can tell you to just like look around, make sure that it's not going to be somebody running behind you or for a save or flashlight, right? Locker stuns are different. It's different with locker stuns. It could be, you know, especially if somebody who's experienced with locker stuns, I can use Pebble to, like, throw you off. So you, it might not even be in the same locker. But at least a killer would be a little bit more aware if I catch with a palace, with a um, locker stun versus a lot of these killers who just, like, for some reason just go straight for the pickup and then just get the stuff. But anyway, I'm knocking out two gens, and then I'm on a third gen knocking it out. And this entire time, the guy keeps going down, but the streamer is not doing the gen with me. Now, my issue is not even with the streamer at this point, only the fact that he's not really being productive on the objectivity. is he's, he's just trying to have bold points or just help his guy out. Because they were in a party, okay? And then so, like, I hear his friend say, what is that Dwight doing? He's like, I, I, have you, is he not doing gins? And his guy had to correct him. Like, bro, like, he was, a, he was like, no, he was on a gin the whole time. Like, who else you think was doing a gin? Like, I know you're in chase. It's kind of hard to pay attention to, like, anything else but the chase. But it's like, you hear the ching part at some point, right? Like, we, I did three gens alone. The, eventually, that, um, the, that uh, bot ended up getting, you know, died off. And mind you, it's not like we were going against the killer that was... We were going against the killer that was kind of emotional. What I mean by emotional is like, when he eventually caught me, he or she was hitting me in the basement. Eventually, when they were catching, like, when he caught um, the Dwight, um, and, you know, you're gonna, you can imagine how angry he or she was because they got the stun and then they got the you know it was a long chase because he's taking hits and you know running behind him and then he just kept hitting him on hook and going after him so it was just like if he just had like one other person the game would have been over with and we were on the game so it wasn't like the game was like a hard match for us against doc right so then like eventually though like he kept like so i so he got hooked and then he chased me again so he chased me three times out of the three times he won like one chase and that was like in the very beginning, which it still wasn't really a win because I still run him at least a minute. A minute is a decent chase. So then I end up like, but I kept losing him in chase because the build that I have, and I want to be very clear as to why I have an issue with this uh, survivor, Dwight, is that when he got killed, he died out and he was, he died out and he was spectating. He kept trying to talk about my gameplay. Oh, well, you know, he, he's not even, he, he used his camera and go wrong because I made like one mistake in my camera. God forbid I make one mistake out of, I mean, out of how many hours I played this game, right? But it's like, wait a minute. See, he brought us to that map. He had balanced landing. 
So you know usually If you go to like Dead Dog Or you go to like I don't know Like for me If I go to You know uh, That one winter map What is it called uh, Ormond's Right, I'm gonna bring brand, balance landing. I'm gonna bring some other type of loop and build. Dead dogs. I'm gonna bring balance landing. Like these are maps that we know. If we're gonna go to a specific map, you're usually gonna try to bring a build. Same thing with Killer or Myers. You go to Leary's. He's gonna try to use that one where he can see through the walls, or whatever. Right. But the fact that you were ass in your chase, and your guy had to help you on a consistent basis and pick you up, and all I had was just a a, a, a stealthy build. I had head on. Quick and quiet. Um, I didn't even have windows on because I was I wasn't even trying to go to the Gideons. I was trying to go to Auto Haven. Uh, and I think I I don't know if I had Pebble. I don't, I forgot what else I had. But it was a stealth build, and I still was busting his ass in chase and last longer in chases. Granted, DBD is an RNG game. We want the game to be so competitive, and it can never be a real life competitive game because you can't control the RNG even if, even when they do in comp. When they try to, you know, just why argue against that, not to digress again, but even when you go to that level, and yeah, you have people who have a lot of hours into the game. I think they say if you have like around two, three thousand, maybe four thousand hours, you, should, you, you would be considered to be in that league to understand what you're doing. But it's just like, they have almost double the four thousand hours. It's the fact that like, even when they control the map, arbitrary rules, which doesn't make sense because at the end of the day, the devs did not design it that way. You can't just say, oh, well, it's just gonna be consistently this way and we're gonna play uh, Wraith only on Dead Dog Saloon because that's when he's really effective against these good survivors. Then it just, it doesn't make sense because you're choosing specifically what map only killers can play on, restricting certain add-ons, certain maps can't be played, certain killers can't play against certain type of builds, some weird stuff. And then at the end of the day, no matter, even when they do fix it like that, you still don't control the RNG, which means, guess what? Maybe when he went down, he went around and even though, to be honest, the game is a survivor-sided map. It, it is easily that. It is easily that. It's not even a question. All you need is balance landing and you good, to be honest, like, to be like a god in that map. But he was not a god. He was ass. Like, it's weird to me because it was just like, okay, I get it that, yeah, you could have run into a dead zone, but you had your guy trying to help you out and protect you. I didn't even have that. So you're talking about my gameplay. And I can hear this on streaming. A lot of, a lot of survivors have to understand this. I mean, uh, people have to understand this when they're streaming. Is that if you're going to be in a party with somebody who is like that bold and toxic, that could just make you look bad. It, does, it doesn't make you look good. Because even if you're not saying that, if you're not even trying to correct that person, but like, hey, chill out, I'm streaming, hey, don't be, you know what I mean? Why do all of that? And these ain't always kids. These are not always 17, 16 year old kids. These, these are not, like, these be grown full adults who work a hard job like me with a hard hat. Why do that? Like, you have TTV in your name. So you gotta know a killer's gonna come to your stream, survivor's gonna come to your stream. Y'all got all the chat rules, don't be disrespectful. But then you are tolerating that, like, that happened. Like, I was literally on this girl's stream when I hit P100. No, I wasn't P100. I was like maybe P90 at the time that was a hell of a grind and yeah i remember i was in a stream and some guy was just talking in in her stream like saying oh man he he must have all the time in the world he must have all the even though at the time i mean it, there weren't many of us p100s around so it was a flex you know so i was up and coming on that and it was just like she was just allowing the guy to just trash talk and then she kind of giggled and type shit like if you don't get chill like 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 you look like you on his d a little bit too hard like don't you think Right? Like, if you are a streamer, you are tolerating that, that is a problem. Because that's a reflection of you. So, like, I, I don't understand that. So, it, so basically, um, not that I was hating on the guy that was, that was in the game today, but it was the fact that, like, his friend was just talking mad, you know, ish, and it was like, he would just ask. And then, like, okay, so he went down, and then I, it was just me and the Claudette, and then... Mind you, he's still spectating me. I jump into the, he chased me another time. I lose him, I don't have windows, I'm trying to guess where everything is, and then I jump into the locker, quick and quiet, which I love, because you can lose a killer just like that. Killer go off of audio and visual. They have to be able to see that. So you can't, you know what I'm saying? So like you gotta be able to like, you know, use that when you need to. And then he just couldn't find where I was at, and then boom. But I jump into the locker near the Claw Deck, because I kind of figured that the Claw Deck was gonna come by and try to run this way. And I jumped out and stunned the killer. I didn't have to do that. I could have just, like, thought about myself and just hid all day and then tried to gloat. Like, oh, well, I barely got caught this game. No, I'm not like that. But there are survivors who will do that. But his friend was sitting on the sidelines, 
and get no minutes. Garbo. Still talking. And get like just 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 still talking. And then so I end up dying out eventually. And then I don't know what happened. But I ended up leaving. But I kept now here's the thing. I in the game game, you know when the survivors are getting that extra cardio, that forever cardio, I call it. <laughs> when they're just like constantly running up like in the, at the end game screen. I go to the dude's chat. See, I slide in DMs. I'm thirsty like that. I go in the dude's chat though. And thank God he ain't having on followers only. Which I don't know what's the point of that. Okay, if I wanted to be on that timing, I can just follow, talk my trash, and then dip. Again, I'm not gonna come at y'all personally, like your personal life and stuff like that. But it's just like I just had to make sure I even know the guy if I knew that the guy immediately was on console, both of them were on console. But if I knew that the guy was immediately on console, I just would have messaged him just on that and I would just would have left it alone. But you already know me, and I, and and I'm listen. I believe in I four or not. That's literally how I am. I believe that there's ways of handling things. Don't get me wrong. Some a lot of people would be like, "Why don't I just move on?" Because I bought the game. All right, make me move on. Type shit. But like seriously, like, bro, I wrote what I wrote. Like, hey, yo, but and mind you, when I was saying this, I wasn't talking about the streamer. I was talking about his friend. And then I end up leaving. And see, you can block me all you want to. I'm not gonna come back to your stream. Like people do that, that's fine. But see, I, one thing about me is I'm not gonna argue back and forth in your stream. I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say and I'm gonna get up out of there, right? Like I'm literally gonna say what I'm gonna say and I'm gonna dip. You can call it being petty all you want, right? But I, I could care less. I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say and I'm gonna dip. And I don't plan on coming back. I ain't, this ain't got no receipt. I don't want no more service. I ain't got none of that. I ain't coming back to this. Once I leave, I left because you already left left a bad taste. Pause. So I end up like. Going, then I end up going back to the load game stream. I'm like, okay, so they're both on console. So I immediately messaged that, sh- that dude that was with that streamer that was talking the most. I said all I needed to say, and then I blocked him because I do not care. I'm going to block you. There's nothing that you was going to say constructively regardless. I was going to say what I was going to say, and I was going to dip. Is that, some people might say that's a whole move. Okay, whatever type shit. I said, hey, you come to my channel, check out my content. He can, he can comment. He can, he's he's going to get blocked there, too. But, <laughs> I mean, hey, like, you never know if you don't try, right? <laughs> I mean, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Like, you got you to gotta draw. There's no way I'm going to tolerate that. Like, that's the one thing. Like, people try to whisper me. Like, bro, I don't be on Twitch like that. I don't read them them, twi- them whispers. Like, what are you doing, bum? <laughs> uh, bro, I don't, be, I, don't, I don't be on whisper like that, bro. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> so anyway man To make a long story short uh, I'll just close it with this Cause I'll, I won't keep it too long I just think that like In this community Both sides easily have it Like that I, Both sides Right Both sides have the potential And opportunity to be toxic If they want to do. Even people might even say What I said They, they, they would probably would say Hey just move on Like why do you care That person just saying this And whatever Right, I just don't go as far as talking about somebody's personal life or opinion. Like, if I saw your face, I wouldn't be like, you know, oh, you, you know, what I'm saying, are oh, you fat, whatever? And you know, there's people who do that. There's people who come at women on here too, and there's women who do that. Listen, there's dudes that would make sexist joke about women, but there's women who do the same thing. I'm not trying to take it down that turn, but like, please don't act like you don't be okay. Like, I watched my boy, nobody named Ghost. Right, shout out to him. But I've seen a lot of times he camping a female on the cook. And I, like, okay, okay, you have guys, if they're, like, going against a female streamer, that's a killer, right? And they're, like, a survivor, you have a lot of guys. You have a lot of guys that would be like, oh, she a dishwasher and get back in the kitchen type shit or, you know, uh, you know, like, what is she, you know what I'm saying? They'll say all of that, okay? And that's messed up, don't get me wrong. But then you have a lot of girls, though, if they're going against a guy killer or assume it's a guy, you have a lot of girls And they be streamers Or they be friends with the You know The streamers be friends With people who be saying this Just saying That the first thing they go to Is a lot of women do this This is the first joke they say Is It must be small <laughs> It must be small How small is it Right How You know It's like we have to just go to that And there's like Kids who probably watching too Like relax you know, like, people just go there. It's like, let's just, you know what I'm saying? It's not like we have game chat. You know, like, you might be able to see stuff during the end game chat when it's, like, PC. But, like, bro, like, they do that. You know what I mean? It's just it's just weird. Like, I don't know. But what I'm saying is both sides have it bad. Both sides have it. Like, I just think that when it comes to Survivor, 
they can be the most cringiest because at least for the most part you don't even see kill usually when i go to a killer stream they know what they're likely gonna have to deal with because you know they like they, they might get flack for playing a certain type of way that it's not fun for survivor but survivor will turn on their own team send back their own team get mad at you because you didn't bring a cobbler because plenty of people don't <laughs> uh, got mad at me in my last video because i just don't bring them and stuff like that and you know I just I just don't have enough for everybody, you know, type shit. Like I don't have enough for everybody. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I gotta eat too. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't got kids, but I act like I do. Type shit. When it comes to my cobbler, I'm not giving it to y'all. Especially if y'all gonna be like playing a certain type of way, a certain type of style and stuff. It's just like I'm just not doing that. You know, you got a lot of survivors that will try to like sandbag you in the game and block you off so a killer can catch you, and then killer will just mess around and so like it's a lot of stuff that I just see. And then, like, a lot of times, survivors will lose the game. Like, we will already lose the game because they're not focusing on doing gens. Just like the last game you are just playing. Like, I, see, people could talk about broken maps for survivors. Like, survivors, like, oh, they bringing us to the game, bringing us to Gideon. They're bringing us to, you know, all these other maps that, a lot of, like, that they don't like. You know, a Garden of Joy, all this stuff. But, like, the average kill rate, I mean, of total for a killer is 60%. Okay? We don't. We're not winning our games. See, even just in that game that I was just telling you about, like, we lost that game. Killer got a 4K. He at least got a 2K, so he wasn't going to lose the game. Because the devs made it about kills. If you want to argue that they should make it about hooks and, you know, they should make it about that, fine. But as of right now, it's all about killings. That's all it's about. So Killer's going to play the, the way they need to play to win the game. Dev's probably going to do that regardless, but that's just how it is. And the stats says otherwise. See, when people try to argue about, like, the stats and of stuff... And they argue with emotions and feelings. Be be careful with those people. Not even just in this game, just in life. Just be careful, because that just doesn't make sense. Like even if you don't agree with it, or even if you have feelings about it, it doesn't stop it from being true. You know, there's probabilities and possibilities. I try to get people to understand the difference. Yeah, I'm on Reddit and I'm talking to people like, "Hey, I made a post. Uh, is the game killer side, survivor side? Or oh, the top team is is the best uh, survivor team in the world can be killer." Okay, well, they already showed the stat that the best Swift team, I ain't talking about arbitrary rules where they bring, I'm not talking about that. People love talking about that. I'm not talking about arbitrary rules where it's like stuff that it's not counted by the devs. I'm talking about literally the best surviving team. They have a stat of them not even escaping, probably might have changed now, of not even escaping more than 48% of the time. That's the best surviving team, like the best survivor team. So not even half the time they are even escaping their matches. Right. And so what I'm telling them is like, OK, if even if you think it's different, you might talk about something that's like a possibility. Like you proven that one percent of the uh, players in the, in the world can be the best killer in the world and whatever. Let's just give you that. Let's just say hypothetically that's true. You can't count the minority and as if that changes the overall the majority. That's just not how it works. Right. For example, I, I give like a, you know, a wild like an analogy. But if I'd be like, hey world hunger exists you can't be man no it doesn't me and my friends eat every day we just ate last bro we just had some mcdonald's bro we talking about world hunger exists people in my family is eating we ain't starving we good over here like if you say something that's stupid i mean then then you're stupid right because if i say overall most people or a lot of people are struggling eating it, it's it's more than just your world view it's the same thing with dead by daylight if the numbers are set by the devs, the people who created the game, not people who created comp and all this other stuff, the people who actually curated the game, if they said that this is what it is, and even two years ago, they, when they heavily nerfed Survivor and heavily buffed Killer and patch 6.1.0 that literally changed the game, base mechanic for Killer and Survivor, to be what it is and how they design and Killer, design maps. I don't want to hear about us being on certain maps it's so broken for ki for Survivor, but most killers are not losing. I don't care if you go to and you win in there all your games. Let's say hypothetically that you are, which we all know that you're not, because you're not like that, right? At the end of the day, most people are not winning their games against killer. That's just how it is. So even though we went to Gideon and we were on that map and we had people br running and blocking for each other and not on gens, we still end up losing the game, all uh, because we had two bots on the team. Three, technically. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the uh, actual bot, and then you yeah, have like the three bots and stuff. It's just how it is. 
But into conclusion, I just think that at the end of the day, you know, things can change, but people are who they are. People are people. That's just what it is. So people just have to get used to that in this community. I just think that if you are going to stream, that's very brave to have a camera. That's very brave to because in this community, especially with the way DBD is designed, it's a party game. It's not meant for it to be on an equal level footing. It's asymmetrical. You have a lot of survivors who want to win. I'm a very competitive player myself, um, just by nature, you know. But in this game, you just have to accept that RNG plays a huge factor. Um, it's just what it is. So. I just think that people take personal shots and cheap shots. Um, there's people who, even just last video, just viewed shamed me and sub shamed me. And, and, you know, people saying this, that, and, oh, you must be this, and just taking things to a level. And, and I literally say, hey, just keep it respectful. Uh, just keep it what it is. But people are just, they take things too personally. Too personally. Like, the guy that I was, like, he had five, four or five people, and I was, like, the fifth person in the chat. I didn't sit here and, you know what I mean? I've never, you can never look at any of that and say, hey, but at least I'm, you know. The only time I come at somebody, though, if it's, like, a rando talking about, like, my vid, I'm like, bro, you were here watching me. Like, this conversation's, like, it's weird because, like, you're here watching me, and, and, you're, and this is existing because you're watching me. I'm not watching you. And I'm not trying to even come at them. It's just what it is. Like, some people are just weird. It's like they just say things just to say things in this community. So just be prepared. If you're going to play killer and you play the way you play, uh, just accept that if you're going to be a streamer, this is just what it is. Same thing with Survivor. If you're going to be TTV and you know that people can see your icon, people can see my P100 icon, uh, people can see that I'm a, if I was a TTV, or if people just see my name for a minute in this community, then, yeah, somebody might come after you. That's just all it is. So you just have to understand that. Like, that's just what it is. And it's unfair that it's asymmetrical because if a killer just wants to go after you, bro, there's nothing you can do about it. The killer will literally throw the game and do not care. I've had that happen to me so many times, bro. They will throw the game just to prove a point, just to get you out of the game because maybe they saw you before or they want to try to prove something against you. You have survivors that's also, they're not going to care. They're not going to leave the exit gates. They're just going to teabag at the exit gate. That's just how it is, man. So I would just be very weary of that. Just accept the good with the bad. There's always a silver lining. Well, most of the time. But hey, if you enjoyed this, uh, please like, share, subscribe, and comment your thoughts below. Have you had any bad experiences with TTVs? Which I'm sure we all have. Or at least a decent portion of us have. Um, do you play Killer? Do you play Survivor? What would you like to see differently? Um, just don't think, I think DBD is an interesting game. And I don't think it's going to uh, every cha ever change. So, but hey, if nothing else, please uh, check out my other content. Check out the latest video of my thoughts on Reddit. Me reading people's uh, comments from Reddit about uh, sharing cakes and stuff like that. Anniversary cakes. Should you bring them? Should you share it with them? Should you, you know, should you share it? <laughs> like, did you bring it for the whole entire class? Did you not? Did you only get to your friends? Let me know. But if nothing else, hope you guys have a blessed and safe day. And uh, nothing else. Peace.